Welcome to Sports Vibes TV. I'm your host, Keith, and in this video, we're going to be looking at James Booknight. Now, James Booknight is a player that has been linked to the Knicks in multiple articles, and in order for us to get him, we're going to have to move up in the draft. Right now, the Knicks have the 19th and the 21st pick overall in the 2021 NBA draft, and Booknight has been projected to go anywhere as high as number 8 to number 13 in this year's draft. So it's going to cost us some draft capital to acquire him, so I'm making this video just to give you guys a little bit more information on Boop Knight. So we're going to start with his bio, get a little bit of background information on the player. Then we're going to discuss his pros and cons of his game. And make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because I'll be debuting the Sports Vibes draft rating. And with these draft ratings, I want to make them as interactive as possible. So make sure you stick around and see what I have in store. Also, if you like this video, do me a favor, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. so with that being said, let's jump right into James Book Knight's bio to see if we can learn a little bit more about the player. Book Knight's story differs from that of the usual NBA lottery pick. Most lottery picks, they have phenomenal AAU buzz, have great high school careers, move on to prestigious colleges and universities, and then play for a year or two and move on to the NBA draft. But for Boot Knight, completely different. Boot Knight didn't start playing basketball until he was a freshman at LaSalle. And the reason for that is he was playing baseball for the majority of his time up till then. It wasn't until he was diagnosed with severe tendonitis in his elbow and doctors recommended Tommy John surgery that he decided to reevaluate what he was going to do with his future. And luckily for him, his freshman coach saw him playing intramurals at high school, at his school and said, "Hey, do you want to consider coming and playing with us?" So that's what kind of put him on the track to playing basketball and things were starting to work out, but he wasn't highly recruited while he was at LaSalle. So what he did was reclassified and changed school. He went to McDuffie Prep School and there he made that move so he can get a little bit more or a lot more exposure playing against more elite talent. And it worked out for him because he ended up getting a scholarship offer from UConn. But his time at McDuffie did not come without injuries. He did hit his meniscus while he was at McDuffie. So there are some injury concerns when it comes to Boop Knight. I just wanted to mention that. We've already had potential Tommy John surgery, which he may still need. I didn't see any reports saying he got the surgery or not, and then he tore his meniscus at McDuffie. But let's continue. While he was at UConn, he really had a breakout season, I would say his sophomore uh, year. Averaged 18.7 points per game, 5.7 rebounds per game, only averaged 1.8 assists per game, but he shot 45% from, th from the field. What I have issues with is him shooting 29% from three. Now, as a freshman, he shot 35% from three, so there are signs that he can knock down the shot, but you add the injury concerns, and even his time at UConn was cut short because he had another injury this time to the other elbow. So. Boop Knight, you know, it's a little bit worrisome, a little bit troublesome, but we'll, we'll continue. Now, moving on to James Boop Knight's pros, he's got a lot of things that I like about his game. When it comes to his pros, he has the ability to knock down shots from all three levels. So that's a plus right there. We need some scorers on this team that can threaten the defense from multiple spots on the court and in multiple ways, and that's something Boop Knight can do. He thrives in isolation situations, creating shots off the dribble, so that's one way he can ab he's able to get to his spots on the court. He can either get to the basket and finish. He also has an array of step-back shots that he can pull out of his uh, toolbox whenever he needs to. He is a little bit right-hand, I won't say a little bit, but he is right-hand dominant. There's times where he'll drive with his left hand and he'll still find a way at the free throw line to switch hands 
get it over to his dominant hand and try to finish that way. But uh, like I said earlier, or a few minutes ago, well, I guess it was seconds at this point, he has some step backs that he's able to use when he's driving with his left hand and he's able to knock down those step backs effectively and efficiently. So he has some moves in his repertoire and that's something I really like. Now, when it comes to him as an athlete, he's a lanky athlete that uses his frame and leaping ability to grab rebounds and finish putback opportunities. Book Knight uses his athleticism to be a problem on the glass. And I think if you pair that with RJ Barrett, another wing, another guard who can go out there and grab you six, seven, eight rebounds, I think that's going to be great. I think Book Knight, not the greatest defender in the world, but you have to grab rebounds to finish the defensive possession. And James Book Knight is definitely going to help you with that with his athletic ability. So that's another pro, another positive I see in Book Knight's game. Another thing that, that's great is he's good finishing at the rim as a cutter, good movement off ball. So him as an off ball guard, I think if he doesn't work on some aspects of his game, that's where his ceiling will be as a guard that's going to be off ball, won't be able to be the primary playmaker. So the fact that he is good knowing when to cut and knowing how to get to the rim without actually having the ball in his hand, I think that bodes well. So at least if you do draft Book Knight and he doesn't turn out to be the combo guard that can also run your offense, you at least still have the opportunity to have him out there on the court playing off ball. He has the ability to knock down the outside shot so he can help you with spacing. And he's a slasher, you know, through and through. So the fact that he has those two aspects of his game that are all positives for me. Like when you look at his ability to knock down shots from all three levels, thrives in isolation, good at finishing at the rim as a cutter, good movement off ball. All those things kind of make me think about players like a Donovan Mitchell or a, a Devin Booker. But when you're thinking about Donovan Mitchell, think about the coach that a lot of people say got the most out of him. That's Johnny Bryant. So if Johnny Bryant is able to get his hands on James Book Knight and develop him, Book Knight could turn into a pretty good pro he's just going to need uh the right coaching staff to to help him develop not only as a scorer but also as a playmaker and that's going to lead us right into the cons when it comes to james book knight and some of the cons to his game i think one of the first things that jumps out to me is his poor shot selections at times and i think this directly contributed to his lower three-point percentage earlier on in the video i mentioned he shot 29 percent from three as a sophomore which was down from the 35 percent from three he shot as a freshman and i uh, attribute that directly to the poor shot selection he can knock down the three efficiently he just has to stop taking a lot of the bad shots he was taking during his sophomore year even sometimes during his freshman year so if we have you know tom thibodeau if we have johnny bryant working with him to try to you know reduce the amount of bad decisions he makes out there on the court i think he's definitely going to have the ability to see more time on the court and therefore develop his game um, much further another thing i'm seeing with boot night is he's a streaky shooter and dry spells can cause him to lose confidence in his shot this is uh, another thing that's a little bit troublesome to me we've seen during the playoffs where we've had uh some guards decide that they were going to turn down some open looks so we definitely need him to continue to build upon his confidence and i think with the young core that we have now i think that's definitely something that his teammates are going to help build up as well as the coaching staff you see rj full of confidence julius randall you know full of confidence iq Full of confidence you know these types of personas i would assume would rub off on book night if he's sharing the locker room with these players so streaky shooting definitely something that he would have or i would like to see him you know try to get more consistent with uh, and also room for improvement as a defender i won't say he's a terrible defender but there's some times where he can kind of lose track of the person he's guarding so if he doesn't become you know much more on point as a defender with the coach we have at tom thibodeau he's not going to see much time on the court you can look at obi obi would miss rotations and right to the end of the bench so if boot knight who's going to go up against 
some of the most elite guards in the NBA night in, night in, and night out. He's going to have to up his game defensively. Uh, another thing, needs to improve as a passer before he can be trusted as the primary playmaker. A lot of people see James Booknight as a player that could potentially be a point guard. He sees himself as a point guard, and I think that's important as well. But in order for him to take on the responsibilities as the primary playmaker, he's definitely going to have to make better decisions and work on you know his feel for the game knowing where his teammates are supposed to be knowing how to manipulate the defense and and finding ways to give his teammates the best opportunity to score i'm not saying he can't do it what i'm saying is he's a late bloomer so it's going to take him some time and if you're going to move up and draft him and think that he's going to be the heir apparent to the point guard day one you know, you're going to be disappointed. Honestly, if you were going to trade up for Book Knight, I would say don't trade up for him and expect him to be the primary, you know, point guard. If he falls to you and you draft him and you want to see if you want to experiment, you know, feel free. But if you're going to, you know, spend draft capital to go up there and get him and hope that he's going to be the point guard, that's going to be a lot of risk. Coming into the NBA, late bloomer, he's definitely going to have to learn or get more of a feel for the game before he's going to be thrust out there and you know given the reins to run the offense and uh, another issue with book knight has the tendency to over dribble lead into turnovers he has pretty good handle but at times he you know he'll dribble a hole into the court and he's gonna have to move the ball especially here with the knicks you know if you're not julius randall you're gonna have to move the ball regularly and i'm not saying julius randall doesn't move the ball but Julius Randle being the number one on this team, he has a lot more leeway to dribble, dribble, dribble. James Booknight, he's not going to be able to do that here in the NBA. And he's going to have to, you know, in tandem with becoming a better passer and having a better feel of the game, he's going to have to learn when it's time to give the ball up. So now I want to transition into the debut of the Sports Vibes draft ranking. So here's the Sports Vibes TV draft rating for James Booknight. There are eight categories. We have scoring, shooting, ball control, playmaking, athleticism, defense, rebounding, and potential. Now the scoring rubric, if I gave him a six, they're below average. Seven is average. Eight means good or solid. Uh, nine is elite. And the tens are reserved for the transcendent or gifted players coming into the draft. We're going to start with scoring for Booknight. Booknight, I gave him a 10. He's an elite three-level scorer and he can create his own shot. And he's one of the best scorers in this draft off the dribble. So I'm giving him a nine. Shooting, I'm giving him a seven. And you might question, you might wonder, how's he getting a seven when he only shot 29% from three as a sophomore? Well, let's look at his freshman season. He shot 35% and I believe he'll shoot a lot closer to that 35% than he will 29% as long as he has better shot selection. So if he goes to the right team with the right coach, with the right staff that'll work with him, I think we're going to see that he's a pretty decent three-point shooter. Also, ball control has pretty good handle. I'm giving him an eight. Uh, playmaking is definitely the biggest uh, room for improvement or the biggest need for improvement, especially if there are GMs and fans out there that think he could potentially be a, a point guard or the, the primary facilitator or initiate run the offense for a team now one of the big glaring issues for me is the fact that he had 1.8 assists uh, average per game compared to three turnovers per game and to me that's not gonna cut it whether you are the playing the one or the two you can't be giving up that many turnovers and i think it's something that he will he could potentially grow into and get better at because if you look at him he's a late bloomer and some of the biggest mistakes he has when it comes to him running like you know pick and rolls is just having the feel for the game being able to manipulate the defense and be able to to find uh his big man or the roller in, in the right spot or lead them with the with the right pass so if that's something he's able to work on i think he could potentially be one of the best players in his draft if he's able to build upon himself being a playmaker and still become better as a scorer. 
then, you know, there's going to be a lot that he can contribute to a team. So playmaking, definitely the biggest area of, of improvement or the biggest cause for concern. Can he be the primary playmaker on a winning ball club? Not a, a team like Cleveland where all they're doing is losing year after year. Can he be the point guard on a team that one day has championship aspirations? It remains to be seen. Athleticism, athleticism, I'm giving him an eight. Uh, eight, good athleticism, good solid athleticism. You might, you know, bash me for this one and say he can jump out the gym. Why is he only getting an eight? Well, the reason I'm giving him an eight is because when it comes to him in the open court and transition, not the fastest player. You know, he's not Usain Bolt out there on the court. So I had to give him a little demerit from that. I wasn't going to give him a 10 in athleticism. And if, you know, if I already had him as a nine based off his jumping abilities and the fact that he's not the fastest guy, I drop him down, he gets an eight. Now defense, I'm giving him a seven because he has the physical tools to be a solid defender. He has this, the size, he's about six, five when they measured him at the combine. The only thing is his reach came in lower than expected. I think most people projected it to be over uh, or at seven foot when it comes to his wingspan, but it was measured, I think, right around six foot eight. So defensively, he has decent size. And I think if he has Tibbs, Tibbs would be the perfect, you know, defensive mind to really get the most out of him defensively. So I'm gonna give him seven as average. Rebounding, I already mentioned with his jumping ability. Uh, he's a phenomenal rebounder for his position. So I'm gonna give him a nine. He's an elite guard or he's an elite rebounder at the guard position. Now potential, I'm giving him a nine because there's a lot of room for him to grow. Like he's, where he's starting now, I think is a solid uh, spot, but it's even more impressive when you think about him only starting as a freshman in, in high school. So I think there's a lot of potential there. There's still a lot of room to grow. And for that, I'm giving him a nine. Will he reach this untapped potential? Remains to be seen, but I think personally, it's there. So at the beginning of this video, I had mentioned I want this series to be interactive. And in order to do that, I'm going to need your help. What I would like you to do is go into the comment section, you know, of course, if you want to participate and write out the eight categories, and I would like you to give me your score. I'll have the scoring rubric down in the description and give me your eight scores for each categories, uh, for each category. And what I'll do is I will, you know, compile all that data, all that information, make a spreadsheet, and I'll make a community big board. And we'll rank the community big board based on the averages of all your uh, comments and rank them based on what draft rating we end up with. And I'll do the same thing for uh, my uh, big board, Sports Vibes TV big board, and I'll do the same thing. I'll make my grades and rank them based off their rating number. I think it'll be a pretty cool, cool way to make our way through this month leading up into the draft, and we'll all be able to see where we stand on a lot of these prospects. So I think that'll be a, a Good little exercise for us to do. And who knows, maybe if I get enough people to participate, I'll look into creating like a, a Google spreadsheet uh, link or something and put that in the description so you guys can go on and, and see what everyone else thinks about these players as well. I think that would be pretty dope for the channel. So if you would like to participate, this would be the uh, best time or the best part of the video to go ahead and, and let me know what you think down in the comments. Once again, I'm Keith. I want to thank you for checking out the video and let me know your thoughts as well, specifically on James Booknight in the comments. So thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Keith, host of Sports Vibes TV and I'm out.